only qualification is you got to know you're a sinner. Mm -hmm. Admit it. You'll be no different than anybody else that's in here. Amen. Amen. Wow. Well, church, I don't know about you, but I, uh, God's here. He's here again tonight, but a whole different direction. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I'm going to ask if you would, open up to Luke chapter 17, 17th chapter of Luke tonight, talking about the goodness of God, how good he is to tell us yet one more time that Jesus is coming. You better be ready. Luke chapter 17, if you have found that, if you would, if you don't mind again tonight, would you please stand with me again tonight out of the reverence of reading God's word. Luke chapter 17, verse 32. 17, verse 32. The Bible says this. Remember Lot's wife. Oh, Father, Father, how much love must you have for mankind? Lord, that you would allow Jesus to come, to give his life for an old, dirty sinner like me. By the name of Randy, Jesus went there for me. Oh, Father, I could never thank you enough. I can never praise you enough, but Lord, I'm sure going to try come eternity. But Lord, tonight, as we have gathered here in this service, Lord, you've already settled in. Father, there's a whole different move of the Holy Spirit again tonight. Father, thank you for meeting us here. Lord, as we have gathered, I pray again tonight, Lord, that you would once again speak to us in that voice. That voice that is undeniably yours tonight, Father. Lord, I pray again tonight, Lord, that we will realize that this Tuesday night, this one, Lord, has never come before. Lord, nor will this Tuesday night ever come again. Lord, not this Tuesday night. So, Father, we will never meet exactly as we have met here tonight. Father, I pray that, Lord, may be decisions that need to be made tonight. Lord, may we realize that we may never have another opportunity to see those decisions come to pass. Oh, Father, Lord, would you speak to us tonight? Holy Spirit, please, don't leave us now. But, oh, God, would you speak like you've never spoken before? Oh, Father, would you once again stir us like we We've never been stirred, but God, again tonight, uh, Lord, I need you more tonight than I've ever needed you before. Uh, Father, would you once again anoint me as your servant, Lord, uh, from the very top of my head to the very bottoms of my feet. Uh, Lord, again tonight, from the inside out and the outside in, uh, oh God, anoint me physically, please. Uh, refresh, renew, restore this body. Uh, oh Lord, anoint this voice, but oh God, again tonight, uh, Hide me behind your cross uh, that the enemy cannot get to, that he cannot interrupt or disrupt your service. Uh, but, oh, God, tonight, preach to me uh, and through me your message. Uh, and, Father, again tonight, may we realize uh, I don't care who we are, but, Father, none of us, not the first one of us tonight, will leave the same as we were when we came in. For, Lord, even we'll draw closer or we'll push away one of the two. Yeah. Oh God. Oh God. This is still your revival. This is still your service. Now Father have your way we pray. Lord we'll give you all the praise, glory and honor. For we ask it all. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. Please be seated. We find again tonight, if you go back and jump into the chapter before, uh, we find that Jesus is there and man alive. Uh, the Pharisees and all are trying to get to Jesus. Uh, they're doing their best to try to trip him up and cause him uh, to do something so they can accuse him. Uh, we find there that Jesus does not back down, uh, but Jesus keeps on bringing the word. Uh, we find that he begins to talk to them, uh, begins to tell them about Lazarus and 
and the rich man uh, and all that took place in the great gulf that was between them uh, and that he would not allow Lazarus to go uh, and dip his finger into the water and put on the rich man's tongue. Uh, he told him that he the rich man uh, that if his brothers did not believe those that were then there preaching uh, that van bringing one back from the dead uh, would do no good. We find then there as we jump into chapter 17 uh, that the Bible says in Jesus said uh, unto his disciples that they were living in a time uh, in a world that they could not help but be offended. Uh, but woe unto that one uh, that would be doing the offending. It would be better for him uh, to have a millstone tied around his neck uh, and cast into the sea. Uh, then we find those apostles that have gathered around uh, and they say, hey Jesus, uh, increase our faith. Uh, and Jesus says unto them, uh, Oh, my apostles, if you had the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you could say unto that sycamine tree, Be thou uprooted and cast into the sea, and it would have to obey. Oh, church, I don't know about you, but I begin to think about that. That much of a type of faith, man alive, how small must my faith be for whenever I see things come. I begin to worry and I begin to wonder. And then I remember Jesus said, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, oh church, I don't know about you, but how small must my faith be? Lord, increase my faith tonight, I pray. We find there then that Jesus begins to speak and as he's going, he's leaving that area and headed towards Jerusalem. We find there that he's he goes towards Jerusalem. Uh, he goes down through Samaria and Galilee. Uh, and as he makes his way into a certain place there, uh, we find that there are ten lepers that are there. Uh, and they begin to cry out, uh, Jesus, Master, uh, would you heal us? Uh, and Jesus, talking with them, then says, uh, Go and show thyself to the priest. Uh, and man, they begin to go. Uh, and they realize that something is happening. Uh, and the word of Jesus, man, the leprosy begins to disappear, and only one of them turns around and comes back and bows down at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus says, Were there not ten? Where's the other nine? And man, that one is praising Jesus. And Jesus says to him, Go ahead and go. My faith has made thee whole. And then, man, alive, those Pharisees, man. And the, the, the boldness of them. For the Bible says now they have demanded of Jesus when shall the kingdom come? When shall these things come to pass? And Jesus says, listen, there's going to be those who will say, lo here and lo there. But that's not where it's at. What do you mean, preacher, over oh, us today? It would be something like this. We would say, well, if you don't belong to our denomination. You're not going to go to heaven. If you don't be a member of our church, you're not going to make it in. Church, may I say to you today, you can have your name on every church row from one side of the world all the way around to the other. But if your name's not in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're not going to go to heaven. You can be baptized over and over and over until you look like last week's prune. But if your name's not in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're lost and headed to a devil's hell. We find then as you read through that, Jesus then says to his disciples again, who is he talking to, church? He's talking to his disciples and to those Pharisees that have gathered in. But the Bible is very specific. He says to his disciples uh, the day is coming uh, when you will wish you could have a day uh, there with the son of man uh, old church but it won't happen uh, I don't know about you tonight church uh, but I'm so homesick uh, I'm so hungry to see a day uh, like it was when I was growing up 
when the saints of God were not afraid to raise their hands and to shout the praises down. I'm so hungry. I'm longing to see a time when the altars are filled and sinners are saved and sanctified and God's children and God's family continues to grow. I'm so hungry to have a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. But church, I don't know about you. Maybe if you were able to have that, you would probably be the only place that I could say that it would happen over and over. But church, I am longing for those days to come. But Jesus said also that the Son of Man is coming just as quick as the lightning flashes from one side of heaven to the other. It will take place. And Jesus says to his disciples, oh, but beware, for just as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. They shall be eating and drinking. They shall be marrying and giving in marriage. But preacher, what's wrong with that? I didn't say there was anything wrong with it. But the problem is this. Please get the old enemy. Gets us so wrapped up and wound up in all that is going on around us uh, that we no longer have time uh, for Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. We get so busy uh, that we forget about Him. Uh, oh, preacher, come on. Uh, no, listen to me. Uh, I can remember the time when uh, revival would come uh, and people would put the world on hold. Uh, we didn't have electronics to do our work uh, and the work was done uh, behind a horse and buggy. Uh, the work was done by hand and still yet the churches would fill up come revival time. Sunday was a day of God and people put the world on hold but now we would have that then revivals for a week or two. Now we have them pushed into five days. Some places only two days of a revival were too busy. Listen to the pastors. Listen to the congregation. Preacher, we can't give a whole week to come to revival. Let's just narrow it down. And just as it is or was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Oh, church, he goes on. He's still talking to his disciples. I'm sure those others have gathered in. I'm sure those others are bending an ear, trying to hear what Jesus is saying. He says, just as it was in the days of Lot, there they are building and giving and planning and putting all together, marrying and giving in marriage. Again, nothing wrong with that. We've got to work to live. But oh, church, somewhere, the enemy's got us so bound up that we no longer have time for church. We no longer have time for our personal Bible reading and praying. We're too busy. And Jesus said to his disciples, it'll be just like then. The one up on the rooftop will want to come down, run into his house and gather things up but no it'll be too late the one will be out in the field he'll hear the commotion he'll want to run back to the house get things in order but it'll be too late and then Jesus said in verse 32 remember Lot's wife oh church how important must that be for Jesus to take a whole verse for three words. Remember Lot's wife. Right in the middle of all of that as he's talking to his disciples. Remember Lot's wife. Oh, I'm sure you know the story. But if not, jump back into Genesis chapter 18 and 19 and begin to read. We find there that Jesus or that God is there and two angelic beings. We find Abraham according to the scripture uh, is standing in the door of his tent uh, in the heat of the day uh, Abraham looks up uh, and sees down the road uh, the Lord and two angelic beings uh, making their way towards him uh, Abraham jumps up from where he is 
angels uh, runs out to meet the Lord uh, and the two angelic beings. Uh, and Abraham says, Lord, uh, why don't you come on over here? Uh, let's go over underneath the shade tree uh, and set a spell. Uh, let me get some things together uh, and you can come and have a meal. Uh, I'll get the water and wash your feet. Uh, I'll make up some bread. Uh, I'll go get a calf uh, and we'll have it there. Uh, but Lord, would you just stay uh, and sit a while? Uh, oh, church, I wonder tonight uh, if God was to walk in here uh, in person, uh, in a fleshly body, uh, how many of us are in tune with God uh, in such a way uh, that we could say, oh God, uh, good to see you tonight. Uh, hey, as soon as service is over, uh, why don't you come on over to my house uh, and set a spell? Uh, let's just have a good old time uh, of communion with one another. Uh, I wonder how many of us tonight uh, have got our life in such a shape uh, and in such a form uh, that we can say that. Uh, or how many of us would have to say, uh, Lord, why don't you go to somebody else's house uh, first uh, and let me run home uh, and hide the magazines. Uh, Lord, let me run home uh, and empty out the junk in the refrigerator. Uh, but don't need to be there. Uh, Lord, let me go home uh, and turn off the old shows on the television. Uh, Lord, let me go home uh, and erase all of that junk uh, that's on my computer. Uh, Lord, you mm -hmm. can come, but not right now. Uh, I've got to get some things in order. Oh, church. Can I tell you tonight, the God that I know... <laughs> sees all, hears all, knows all, uh, has got track of all. Uh, you may hide it from the preacher. Uh, you may hide it from the Sunday school teacher. Uh, but he already knows. Uh, I wonder tonight then, uh, as Abraham and God sit there uh, and had that good time of communion, uh, just talking with one another, uh, like good old friends do. Uh, and the Bible says, the Lord says, hey, uh, Abraham, Where's Sarah? She's in the tent, Lord. And the Lord says, Well, Abraham, I, I want to tell you and Sarah that y'all going to have a baby. And the Bible says that Sarah overheard the conversation. And Sarah began to laugh. And the Lord said, But Sarah, why are you laughing? And she said, I didn't laugh, Lord. Now y'all can get churchy if you want to. But I think I'd have been just like Sarah. I didn't laugh, Lord. Lord, uh, oh, y'all look at me like that. Mm -hmm. How many times has God said, this is what I want you to do? Uh, and you say, ah, yeah, right, Lord. Not me, you mean that preacher. Mm -hmm. Come on, church. Oh, Abraham said, Sarah, he's already known. He hears you, Sarah. Shh. But man alive, then the two angelic beings look at Abraham. And Abraham and the Lord and the two angelic beings start their way towards Sodom and Gomorrah. And the two angelic beings go ahead and the Lord says, Abraham, can I tell you why I'm really here? You see, I know you're going to raise your children the way they ought to be raised. So Abraham, this is the real reason we came. You see, I've been hearing a lot in heaven about Sodom and Gomorrah. And I just wanted to come down here for myself uh, to make sure that I know what I already know. Uh, but so there'll be no excuses come judgment day. Uh, there'd be no way they can say, but Lord, you didn't come and see for yourself. Uh, they forget I already know it all. Uh, but anyways, I come to prove to them uh, that I know what's going on. Amen. And I can see Abraham for the Bible says, Abraham speaks up and says, Lord, Lord, you're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Lord, Lord, if you, if you could find 50 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord, would, would you spare Sodom and Gomorrah? Lord, it's not like you to destroy the righteous with the wicked. Lord, wouldn't you spare it if we could find 50 righteous people? 
And the Lord says, Abraham, if there's 50 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, I will spare it. Then the Bible says that Abraham, I believe, began to think probably through. And the Bible says that Abraham said, Lord, wait a minute, please don't get angry. But Lord, it's me, Abraham, again. Lord, if you could find 50 minus 5, 40 and 5, Lord, would you spare Sodom and Gomorrah? If you could find 40 and 5 righteous people, and God God says, Abraham, if there's 40 and 5 righteous, I will spare How about 40? Lord, it's me, just dust and ashes. How about 30? Lord, would you spare it for 30 righteous people? Oh, church, are you hearing what I'm saying tonight? It's not congregational righteousness. It's not pastoral righteousness. It's not denominational righteousness. It's not church by law righteousness. It's not your righteousness or mine, but it's the righteousness of God himself. Oh, Lord, if there's 30 righteous people uh, down there in Sodom and Gomorrah, would you spare it? Uh, and the Lord says, sure, Abraham, uh, for 30. How about 20, Lord? Uh, would you spare it for 20? Uh, sure, Abraham, but the 20 righteous people uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord, just one more time, uh, Lord, can I ask this of you? Uh, if you can find 10 righteous people, in all of Sodom and Gomorrah, would you spare them? And the conversation is over. The Lord says, sure, Abraham. The Bible says the Lord goes his way, and Abraham his way. Church, I, I can't help but wonder tonight, again, if God walked in here and we were having this conversation, I wonder tonight if we could say, Lord, if there's 50 righteous people here in this area of town, Lord, would you spare the world tonight? If you were coming back tonight, Lord, if you could find 30 righteous people, maybe in this church tonight, Lord, not my kind of righteousness, what I, not what I think righteousness is, but Lord, your righteousness. Lord, what, what, what church would we have to go 30, 20, 10 right. for his kind of righteousness? And the conversation be over. And God says, sure. If you can find them, if I can find them, we'll spare the world tonight. Oh, church. What kind of shape must we be? Amen. Yeah. For then you jump into chapter 19, and the Bible says, just as Abraham was sitting under the shade of his tent in the door, uh, we find that Lot is now sitting uh, in the gate of Sodom and Gomorrah in the evening. Uh, I don't know if the men had already been there and gone or if he was waiting on them. Uh, but guys, we know how it is. Uh, anybody that somebody has got their specific seat uh, and Lot is sitting there in the gate uh, on his own little rock, uh, we know how it is down at the place of work. Uh, I can remember when I worked at the feed mill. Uh, man, all the people that were somebody, uh, all the people that people looked up to, uh, man, we would get to the shop early in the morning. Uh, we would sit around and, man, alive we all, uh, everybody that was somebody uh, had our own five-gallon bucket, uh, and they would sit there. Uh, and maybe the conversation started out good uh, and clean and healthy, uh, but if you hung around long enough, uh, those that were somebody, those uh, that had influence on people, uh, it wasn't very long uh, until the conversation would begin to change. Uh, and if you were somebody of Jesus, uh, you couldn't stand to be there. Uh, but man, those that were somebody, uh, they had their place. Uh, nobody was going to move around. Uh, and that's where Lot is. Uh, he's sitting in the gate there of Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and Lot looks up. Uh, just as Abraham did, uh, and sees the two angelic 
he's coming. The Bible says that Lot jumps up from his seat and runs out to meet them. But read it closely. Lot don't say, come on in and let's have a seat and let's just sit a spell and talk. No, the Bible says that Lot ran out to greet them, yes, but he's trying to get them into his house. And Lot says, listen, come on in, but get in the house and stay the night in the house. But early in the morning, you've got to get out of town. For you see, he knew that he knew the men of the city and the men knew the real lot. And the man, the, the two angelic men said, no, Lot, we think we'll just stay out here in the street for a while. And the Bible says, and Lot constrained them, began to push them towards the house to get them in. And my goodness, he finally gets them into the house. And the men, the Bible says, the men of the city, young and old and from every corner, are now knocking on the door of the house and all around. Hey, Lot. Where's those men that came into the city tonight? Send them out here so we can know them. And you know exactly what that means. And the Bible says that Lot eased his way out the door and pulled it shut behind him and looks at the men and says, Guys, don't be so wicked. But then he does something that gives him away. He calls them brethren. Oh, Brother Jamie, I've heard Lot preached as a righteous man, but not in chapter 19. He is one of those of Sodom and Gomorrah. He has now identified himself with them and calls them brethren. Oh, I call Jamie my attorney, whatever his name is, my brother and brother Matt and brother Jeff and, and brother Wally. I call you brothers and sisters in here tonight. I identify with you. We're one of each other. We're one of a kind. And Lot calls the men of Sodom and Gomorrah, brethren, please. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. And the Bible says that Lot then says, I've got two daughters that's never known a man. Let me bring them out to you. And you have your way with them. My own flesh and blood, my own two daughters. But just don't mess with them guys. What kind of father yeah. mm -hmm. could give his own flesh and blood, his right. own two daughters over to a mob such as that? Not one that trusts that God will take care of him. Not one that's got his life where it needs to be. If he can turn his own flesh and blood over to a mob. Oh, church, he has done called them brethren. He has now said, I'm one of them and they're one of me. And the Bible says that the men of the city look at Lot and said, Oh, you came in here and you wanted to stay with us. And you're one of us, but now you're going to judge us. We'll do more with you than what we're going to do with them. Give us them then. Lot right now. And the Bible says the two angelic beings put blindness upon the men of the city and snatched Lot back in the house and look at Lot and say, Lot, listen to me. We came down here to destroy this city and we're not leaving until it's done. And so Lot, if you've got any family, anybody that means anything to you, you go get them and get them back here. For in the morning it's going to rain fire and brimstone down and Sodom and Gomorrah will be no more. The Bible says that Lot then runs out into the city, goes to two of his other daughter's houses where his son-in-laws are and he says, come on guys, we've got to get out of town. The Lord has sent somebody down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. It's going to rain fire and brimstone down. We've got to get out of town. Chapter 19 says that his son-in-laws looked at him as if he was mocking. <laughs> yeah, right, Paul Law. When you begin to live like you believe that, then maybe we'll start to listen to you. But you don't live like there's a God. 
You don't live like you believe he can really do that. Church, I can't help but wonder tonight. Why is it we can't get our children into church? Why is it why we can't get them saved? Is it because they see us get all duded and churchy fine uh, for a couple of hours on Sunday morning? Uh, but they know where we're doing, what we're doing Monday morning, uh, and how we're reacting when the car won't crank? Uh, do they see us out there in the yard uh, when the lawnmower breaks down? Uh, and they hear the kind of words that come out of our mouth? Uh, do they know where we go Friday night after work uh, and what we spend our money on? Uh, do they see when we think nobody's looking at what we're looking at on the computer screen? Do they see the real us? Is that why when we try to tell them that Jesus is coming, they need to get their life in order? They don't believe us and they want nothing to do with it. Is that why we can't get them into the family of God? For the Bible says, and his kids looked at him as if he was mock. Yeah, all right, Dad. I know where you go Friday night. Dad, you didn't think anybody was seeing over your shoulder what you have on that computer. You thought I was asleep the other night when you had that on the television. I heard it. I seen, I seen how you reacted. Mom, I heard you on the phone. I heard you talking to so-and-so. You weren't using churchy words then, so don't use them on me now. Hmm. Is that why? Is that why when we say on Sunday you need to come to church? They're like, yeah, right. <laughs> when you begin to live like you believe Jesus is coming in and he's all important, when you begin to start acting like it, then maybe. Oh, sure. For the Bible says that Lot still hadn't got it all together. Read it in chapter 19 for yourself. For the Bible says morning has now come. And there the two angelic beings are. They told Lot. They, they, they warned him. They said, listen, it's coming. You've got to go. Man, come on, Lot. Get yourself together. Get your act on the move. We've got to get out of here. And the Bible says Lot and his wife... And the two daughters that were still at home uh, still ain't in no big hurry. Uh, and so the two angelic beings uh, had to take Lot and his wife and two daughters uh, by the hand uh, and lead them out of the city uh, before the destruction falls. Uh, church, I can't help but maybe believe uh, that as Lot, uh, as the two angelic beings uh, led Lot out into safety, uh, if God made it and take some of us by the hand, and lead us into here tonight into a place of safety to hear one more time Jesus say get ready I'm coming Amen. who's he talking to who's he telling this to remember Lot's wife my disciple the Pharisees I'm sure had gathered but it's there in black and red and white and he said to his disciples and there's no break in there uh, Jesus is telling his disciples uh, and Lot and his wife and two daughters uh, have to be led out of place of destruction is coming uh, and they said Lot listen <coughs> to me uh, you've got to head for the mountain uh, that's the only place of safety uh, well, you've got to make it there uh, and then wait what, what's that Lot and Lot says no no, I, I, that's too far to ask me to go. That's too much to ask of me. I, I can never make it there. I, I will be something will get me in, the, in between here and there. I, can, can, I just, can I just detour over to Zora? It's a little town. It's right over there. See it? It won't, won't that be good enough? Lot is willing to take a chance. A lot gambles that Zora will be good enough instead of 
reaching for the mountain, if they were willing to leave out of the place of destruction, if, if God was willing to send the angelic beings there uh, to warn them, to get them out, uh, to give them another chance, uh, to take them by the hand and lead them to safety, uh, don't you think that God uh, would have given them the strength that they needed uh, to make it to the mountain, uh, the place where God said they would be safe? Uh, but no, God is willing to gamble, willing to take a chance. Church, I, I wonder tonight, I wonder if maybe we're not taking a chance. Instead of living the life 24 hours a day, instead of maybe lovingly encouraging and, 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 and urging our families on to righteousness and holiness, if we're willing to whitewash sin, if we're willing to compromise, to be the good old boy or the good old girl, if we're not willing to push on and say, thus saith the word of God, but if we're willing to maybe call sin not sin anymore, and we're willing to take a detour at that one, or if we're willing to take an exit there, instead of saying no, God said, I can't be found spotless. I can't be found blameless. And if he didn't think I could do it, if he wouldn't give me what I needed to do it, he would have never put it in there. And I wonder tonight, church, instead of saying no, it's still called sin. And it'll still send you to a devil's hell. If we're taking an exit, if we're detouring around that, instead of meeting it head on and calling it what it is. Yeah. If we're not willing to show our children and our mates, then we're doing exactly what Lot done. Amen. And instead of striving for where God said we would be safe, heaven, a place without sin, a place where there'll be no more discouragement, no more defeat, no more tear, no more sorrow, no more sickness, we're willing to settle for second best, man. And maybe tonight we're detour because we don't want to call it sin. We don't want to offend somebody. And the angel said, Lot, you've got to be there before the sun comes up. The Bible tells us that the angelic being said, Lot, don't you dare slow down. Don't you dare look behind you. There'll be nothing back here for you. Disciples, remember Lot's wife. Don't you dare look back. The Bible says that the sun is coming up in the morning as Lot and his two daughters and his wife get to Zorah. I can picture them as they are there. The Bible says, and they were thither. They had to be right there in the city. They had to be ready to step in. Oh, church, I can picture Lot as he's there and he's reaching behind him trying to find whoever he can't turn around. And he finds daughter one and he pulls her into the city. He finds daughter two and he pulls her into the city and he begins to reach for his wife. But he has settled for second best. He then pushed to the mountain and he's reaching for his wife. But the sun is coming up and they have made it right there to the city. And all of a sudden something begins to happen. Back over in Sodom and Gomorrah, the fire of the brimstone begins to fall and they are so close. And Lot's reaching for her, uh, but he settled for second best. He detoured, uh, and she begins to hear something back uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah, and he begins to call out, uh, Hey, Lot's wife! Uh, Hey, Lot's wife, don't step into the city, not yet. I can't believe you're going to go in. Remember the party we had. Remember the good time. Hey, Lot's wife, hey, just turn around. I can see her. She's wanting to, but she's hearing the call, and Lot wasn't willing to push, and she begins to look, and something else says, hey, Lot's wife, 
stay. Hey, remember, I can't believe you're going to leave the fine china and the fine house and all of the furnishings that you worked so hard for. Hey, Lot's wife, I can't believe you're going to go in and leave all of us, your friends, back here in this. How can you run away from us? Hey, just take one look. That's all you need. Just one look. Look back here. Hey, Lot's wife, stay. Mom, Mom, I can't believe you're going to leave us. I can't believe you're going to go. And maybe it was the family. Maybe the friends. Maybe the furnishings. Maybe the party life. Maybe it was, hey, you don't need to go in yet. Remember, we talked about what we were going to do. After you, after we do that, then you can go in. But just one time. Oh, church, we're so close. I believe we can hear the band warming up. I believe Jesus is ready to come back. He's just waiting on the nod of the Father. I, I'm no theologian. You know that by now. I, but, buddy, I, I, I don't think there's anything else that has to take place. I, I believe if Jesus came back right now, I, he wouldn't have to apologize to anybody. I, he wouldn't have to say, sorry, I rushed it a little bit. I, I believe we are right on the verge of stepping into the promised land. I, maybe it'll be another thousand million years. I don't know. Uh, but maybe some of us in here tonight uh, we're right on the verge. We may not make it home. Uh, we may not even get out of this service. Uh, you're that close to making a time to be with Jesus uh, where eternity will be pronounced either welcome home or depart. Uh, and you're sitting here tonight uh, and the old devil saying, hey, stay. You don't need to go to that altar tonight, not tonight. Just set out one more service. You don't need to set that right tonight, just one more. Thanks. Leader of the household, I'm convinced as well as, as much as I can be convinced that if Lot would have pushed just a little bit harder to get his wife and his children to the mountain, that his wife would have been out of earshot because of fire and the brimstone. And his whole family could have made it in. But he wasn't willing to stand as the man of God. He settled for a second bed. And it was just one. Don't go to Close with this. February the 4th, 1984. One of the best days of my earthly life is when I married my wife. I remember we were headed to the church, my brother and I, and he was driving. We were headed through the swamps of Florida, headed over to the church. I remember out in the country, he pulls that old four wheel drive truck over to the edge of the road. And shuts it off and he looks at me and he says, oh brother, just going to ask you this one time. You want to skip this way? Get in another vehicle. We'll head to the airport. We'll do whatever. But we'll fly back to the mountains. Now nobody will ever know the difference. They'll never find you. But I'm going to ask you one. Church, do you realize if I have said this one's okay, I'd have missed my wedding. One of the best days of my life. Do you understand tonight that if you say, okay, I'll set this one out once, and God's dealing with you, that God has now fulfilled his obligation of speaking to you once. Everything past that will be grace. And one time, that's all he's obligated to come. But you look back, you've said it out one more time. 
and you could miss the wedding of all weddings. Just once, that's all it's going to take. Just once. Oh, my disciples. Can't you hear Jesus? Matthew, come on, listen to me. Uh, Peter, please be quiet. Uh, James and John, quit acting like brothers and listen to me. Uh, oh, Judas, Judas, are you listening too? Uh, for you see, there'll be one up on the rooftop. Uh, he'll want to run and gather his stuff up. Uh, but it'll be too late, disciples. Uh, there'll be one out in the field. Uh, he'll hear the commotion. He'll want to run back. Uh, get his stuff together. Uh, but it's too late. Uh, oh, disciples, uh, remember Lot's wife. Uh, oh, disciples, please. Uh, do you remember what I told you? Uh, about Lot's wife. Disciples, remember Lot's wife. For two will be in the mill working. One will be taken and one left. Two will be fighting. One gone, one left. Two in the field. One taken and one left. Oh, disciples, remember Lot's wife. Oh, disciples, please. Judas, Matthew, James, John, Nathaniel, remember, guys, please, if anybody ought to know, you ought to know you've been around more, done more, been part of miracles, heard me pray, but nobody else did. You've been closer to me. You ought to know. Please. Please, disciples. Please remember Amen. Pharisees that gathered here. Are you hearing what I'm telling those that I know? Remember Lot's wife. It's right there. One verse, three words, how important. Just one. That's all it took. The Bible says she's still there today. Nothing grows in the salt sea. Nothing grows in the dead sea. Nothing grows in all of that plain. God destroyed it. The Bible tells me there's coming a day when there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. But hell is for real. Amen. Amen. Those that don't accept will be there not for 10 years, not for a hundred, not for a thousand, not for a million, but for all of an eternity. And a place where the presence of God is not. Remember Lot. Loved them enough. One more time. Tell them. Remember Lot's wife. Oh, Father. I heard it earlier in the service. Amazing love. How much you care for us. Lord, I can't get over how much you care for us to allow us to come into a service like this. Lord, where the Spirit has said it in this place tonight, there's been a holy hush to tell us one more time, remember Lot's wife. For Lot, if he had just pushed a little bit further, maybe she'd have been out of earshot. For the leader of the house tonight that's not willing to stand upon the word of God, oh, Father, help us to be real men and women of you tonight. Uh, and Lord, to stand and still call sin, sin. Uh, to preach it from the pulpit. To live it in the household. Uh, to witness about it on a daily basis. Uh, for our life to represent that yes, uh, we can and we must be found without spot and without wrinkle. Uh, but Lord, it can be done. Uh, or else you'd have never put it in there. Lord, maybe tonight we're we're hanging on to that one thing. Maybe it's calling us even now. Everything but that. 
Lord, it's just that one thing. Father, maybe tonight, maybe tonight we're, we, we've got plans to do something else. And then we think after that, but Lord, we're not even guaranteed the next heartbeat. Lord, we're not guaranteed the next breath. But Lord, you, you love us enough to bring us in here tonight. To tell us one more time, Jesus is coming. Oh, you may want to go home and try to get back, but it, it could be too late. You may go to work tomorrow and hear the trumpet and want to run to the church. It'll be too late. Jesus, that's what I call love. Oh, Father, I, I know some faces. I, I know a few names. But, Lord, I don't know the condition of the heart. Lord, as our piano player and song leader come tonight, 